as well, reaching this precipice, if you're not sure. So, Chan Chai, I mean, I would say, turn this down a little bit. I would say, you know, everyone will have different experiences, and some people will come to certain plateaus in fighting games, and as you mentioned, not everyone will cross it. And that's fine. But I think that the majority of people that reach those plateaus are simply unaware of precisely how to cross them. Sometimes there is an easy answer, often within the mechanics or a move list, that just completely gets around that thing. Players are humans, we are predictable animals, and we will often make the same mistakes over and over and over again. I have found oftentimes that my own uh, stubbornness has contributed to the certain plateaus that I've come across. Now, in my case, what helps me get past that stubbornness is recognizing super strong players copying their habits and just recognizing how different their habits are from my own natural habits, especially when learning a game as opposed to becoming knowledgeable at the game. Like, I, if I watch the really good Pi players, I recognize that they poke more and they go for less 3-3-P plus K. And they go for less 3-3-P plus K because they don't want to put themselves in Nitaku. Now that's a general thing. Lots of... No one wants to put themselves in Nitaku. But the prop, but the thing about Pai is she is well suited to staying out of Nitaku situations. She can keep looping you in minus 1 to minus 5 situations over and over. But this time I'm in stance. This time I'm back turned. This time, if you hit a button, I can backdash and launch you, and so on and so on and so forth. Pi is adept at that, whereas not all characters are. So it's not a simple fundamental thing like I thought it was, avoid Nitaku. No, those Pi players understand that what Pi should be doing is avoiding Nitaku because she is particularly good at it. But you can also take that, you know, with other characters and so on. But that was like one plateau that I hit. But I was able to overcome that through some knowledge, through some study, and some patience. With a lot of people, even if you give them... I don't want to say a lot of people. I will say with some players, even if you give them the information, the actual hurdle they have to get over is within themselves. In the sense that when they have a plateau, it is often not for lack of trying to beat something or for lack of knowledge. It can, it can sometimes be because I'm trying to win in the way that I know how to win, and it's not working, and I can't see myself playing in any other way. It's... It's really hard to get someone out of that mindset. What has to happen at some point is that they are shown the error of that thought process. And instead of thinking, the way that I wish to win is valid, replacing that with... I should see if I can win in my way, but the game never lies, the game is always correct, I'm losing, an adjustment must be made. And some players aren't willing to take that last leap of, I might be completely wrong about how to win, or my preferred form of winning is not valid. Or at least, maybe not valid in the situation I keep using it in, you know? Yeah. Like, when I was learning VF, the big thing I chose to focus on, which isn't wrong, is, you know, force a plus six, then flip a coin. Force a plus six, then flip a coin. Force a plus six, then flip a coin. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to focus on reacting. Every time I get that plus six, I'm going to counter hit mid or I'm going to throw. Or I'm going to counter hit mid and I'm going to throw. And that was fine for a while. A while. Then I, as I played against better players more and more, I recognized that not only were they able to just avoid the coin flip sometimes, but that there's more going on mechanically than I thought. For example, uh, simply crouching when you are minus six, which uh, means that if they throw you, you have a chance to break it. But if they go for counter hit mid, you just get normal hit. And a lot of those counter hit mids are just like fine on normal hit. You know? <laughs> like, oh, I can just crouch in Nitaku and it's just a bit less risky? Oh, okay. You know? Um, or there, there's like other, there's other ways of like instantly crouching that 
don't put you at risk for that counter hit. Or, or I've also seen lots of top players just say, I have the plus six, but I'm not necessarily going to go for throw or counter hit mid. I'm going to go for full circular low. I'm going to go for um, quick mid as a low risk option to cash out on that Nitaku and so on and so forth, right? And as I kept adding op options to it, I'm like, Nitaku is not a coin flip. It is technically a situation where the defender must choose how to defend properly, and there's like two groups of choices. But as the person on offense, I have way more choices than just the two. That completely changed the way I thought about the game and about the mix-up game, specifically. And it made things that Himajan does, it made it, it it brought some of those things to light, you know? So, like... If you do this in enough games, the hope is that eventually you'll just say, no matter what game you're learning, oh, well, the game is right. Let me just find what the game wants, and I will learn and practice that. But if that's not the default mindset, then with... What the player has to overcome is the mindset that they might be close to the right answer, and instead they have to take a more a more uh, methodical approach, and instead say, I am wrong until I am right. And even if I'm right, there might be more right answers. That is not a common thought process. But it's the one that you need to have to have the full fighting game learning experience. Also, next time I go for 3-3-P three, three K against Himajan, I'm gonna I'm gonna low guard. I'm just gonna call it. <laughs> and then I'm curious what his next choice will be. <laughs> he does that a lot. Just like how um Just like how Chief Flash just does screw hook high and just does like a uh, gut punch high, and we need to punish those highs. Himajan just does 2KG like every time he's plus six. <laughs> and I haven't seen anyone just call him and guard it. Um, but yeah. Punish that! Ah! Like, he just does it every time! Like, he just does it! <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't have all the information. Maybe the the studies that I've seen and the papers that I've read aren't a complete view. It's it's not a common mindset. And there's all sorts of, you know, psychological, possibly even socioeconomic reasons to have opposing mindsets to that. So, it is not an easy hurdle to to, to go over.